Hi, I'm Brian Dunbar of Grex Airbrush. And on occasion, we receive feedback that an airbrush is underperforming as a result of time and usage. We've determined that in most cases, this is a result of a cleaning issue rather than a maintenance or repair issue. So we'd like to take this opportunity to properly demonstrate how to clean the tritium airbrush when working with hobby paints. Before we get into the actual cleaning of the airbrush, let's discuss the materials that are necessary for the cleaning process. I have here pipe cleaners, which will be used for cleaning of the bore of the airbrush as well as the fluid nozzle. I have Q-tips, which will be used for the more generous areas such as the paint pot. I also have micro brushes, which can be used similarly for these applications. You will also need the wrench that comes with the airbrush. And then I have two items here, a simple resin brush, and this is a piece of stretched sprue, case in point, from a uh, runner from a model kit in which uh, this has simply been heated and stretched down to a small diameter and I will discuss how this is utilized for cleaning of the fluid nozzle later on in the process. So we're finished with our painting project for today and it's time to go ahead and clean the airbrush. Today we're working with Model Master Paint dark green so it will uh, obviously show up as we're cleaning the airbrush. Right now as it stands just with the paint that's in the airbrush obviously it's a dark pigment. We're going to remove the cap, put that aside, and then we're just going to empty the paint into a coffee cup or trash, whatever receptacle, but you really don't want to reintroduce thin paint back into the original paint. So at this point with the airbrush, let's go ahead and simply try to remove as much of the base paint that's in it by pulling the trigger full bore. And with the sound you hear, you can maybe tell that a lot of paint has already expelled, but there's just a little bit remaining behind. At this point, I want to go ahead and give the color cup a little bit of thinner on a Q-tip and just simply try to swab it as clean as I can. This will take one or two Q-tips in the process. That's pretty good. And then I want to go ahead and introduce some straight thinner right into the airbrush using this eyedropper. So now we're going to go ahead and continue with a flushing technique. And again, you can see quite a bit of pigment, but it's starting to turn translucent, which means we're getting a lot of it out. Because we're pulling the trigger full bore, we're going through the uh, thinner very quickly. Now I'm going to stop for a moment and I'm going to simply pinch off the front end to create a seal and we're going to get some bubbles by doing what we call back flushing. And now when we flush again, you see we're getting more pigment out of the airbrush progressively. We're getting pretty clear at this point. So now, if you were considering another color to continue your project, now would be a good time to do it. Whatever little bit of pigment remains in the airbrush should not inhibit your next color. If you're in a rush or you just need to take a break for a couple of hours, you can go ahead and put the airbrush on the holder, leave a little thinner inside, and the airbrush will be fine. When you return, flush out the remaining thinner, introduce your next color and thinning process, and you're back ready on your project. But we're going to go ahead and continue the cleaning process as if we are completely done and we want to put the airbrush away completely clean. So at this time, we're going to get into the disassembly of the airbrush. We're going to start by removing the fluid no the correction, the uh, nozzle cap. This may have a little bit of paint on the front end. Simply take a Q-tip and just dab that. We have our magnetized crown and nozzles. They may have a little paint. They simply can be wiped as well. And that's all that needs to be done on that part. So we'll put that aside for right now. Returning to the airbrush body, remove the handle. And this knurl here will simply loosen and now you can remove the needle. Now with the needle I like to wipe it right away. And it may or may not have something on it. There was a little bit of a streak there. It looks like we cleaned it very concisely, very easily. Returning back to the body, now you want to use the wrench that comes with the airbrush with the hexagonal interface. This interfaces with the fluid nozzle on the front end of the airbrush. Very simply, 
you want to interface the two and then just gently turn counterclockwise. Remove the wrench and now you can very concisely unthread the fluid nozzle. I'm going to go ahead and take the fluid nozzle and just drop it into my thinner and it can soak. It's stainless steel so your thinning agent should not cause it any harm. There's no seals or anything in the fluid nozzle itself. It's just metal so we'll let that soak while we address the main body. So now let's address the main body of the airbrush. This is where your pipe cleaners are going to come into play. Now one note with the pipe cleaners is you want to make sure it has a small or fine wire inside. You don't want a large fire uh, wire because when you clean the bore of the airbrush you don't want the metal of the wire to gall or damage the inside or interiors of the airbrush. So you simply want to progressively add thinner and swab the inside. I like to spin it around so that the bristles act as a little bit of a scrubbing action. And also let's return to the color cup area with the needle removed, now you can get right down inside all the way. And again, there's a little bit of pigment that was residing in there. And it doesn't take much to get that area cleaned out. Let's return back to the pipe cleaners. And right now, I'm able to push a pipe cleaner all the way back to where there's a seal. And in this area, I just like to, again, give it a really good scrub before I remove it. And as you can see, we are progressively getting to a cleaner and cleaner pipe cleaner. I'm going to do one pass through, simply dry, and we look very clean. Now we also have micro brushes, which you could use instead of the pipe cleaners, but I like to save them because these can get damaged, and just use them for a dry pass through. Sometimes what can happen is you've done all this hard work, You've cleaned the airbrush properly, but a fray may have remained inside the airbrush body, which when the next time you utilize the airbrush, it migrates forward into the fluid nozzle, and as a result, you get negative performance. So I simply use the micro brush to go ahead and just kind of ensure that there's no fray left over. You've done all that hard work. You don't need any foreign matter in there to compromise the airbrush down the road. So let's go ahead and put this aside and return to the fluid nozzle. Okay, with the fluid nozzle, we're going to start off with, again, a clean pipe cleaner with a little bit of thinner. And in this case, it's pretty clean, but quite often, this is where you will get a little bit of pigment still residing in the fluid nozzle. Even though you've done the whole flushing technique, this is where eventually you're going to run into problems. What little bit that's in there, or was in there, isn't really going to compromise the airbrush immediately. But over time, especially if the airbrush is utilized and then sits for a few days or even a couple weeks and then utilized again, through this routine, if you only do the flushing technique, this is where you're going to get material that is going to compromise the airbrush through buildup. And that's where the uh, performance slowly deteriorates. The pipe cleaner will take care of the aft portion of the fluid nozzle. But now we want to utilize the resin brush, if you have one, and just dab it in some lacquer thinner or cleaning agent. And you can just dab it, try to work the uh, brush bristles up into the fluid nozzle so that they are sliding out the front end. This is going to address the very pointy tip of the fluid nozzle. As I mentioned before, you also have uh, your stretch sprue, this basically applies in the same manner. Working from aft forward, you can work the bristle up into the tip to ensure that you have removed any contaminants from the uh, fluid nozzle. Consequently, you can do the same thing with the needle. Just be very careful and very mindful of it. In fact, if you replace a needle, simply use the old needle as a cleaning tool. So this is another app. Uh, way of doing the same thing. What I like to do is just make sure that the interface feels nice and clean. If you get any spongy feeling, usually that's an indication that there's still paint inside and it may be adhering in such a manner that even though you're pushing the needle through, the paint isn't coming out the front end. This is very common with some of the acrylic hobby paints that we use. So if you get that spongy feeling, just keep working either the needle or case in point, the um, 
stretch sprue until you actually get that pigment to release and uh, work out the front of the, air, uh, the uh, fluid nozzle. Now let's return back to the airbrush body and let's go ahead and rethread the fluid nozzle into it. You want to get it finger tight, utilize the wrench again, this time put it in and just gently t turn it clockwise until it comes to a stop. You don't want to do it too tight otherwise you'll over torque and um, strip the uh, threads inside and now you have a maintenance issue. So you want to avoid that. Let's take the nozzle cap, thread that back on along with the crown and then replace the needle. You want to gently slide it in. You can use a lubricant on this if you wish. And just gently push forward until it comes to a stop. Turn the knurl until it locks down. Everything should function nicely. And then return the handle back to the airbrush. So there you go. We've completed the cleaning process of the tritium airbrush. We hope that by following this procedure, you will have peak performance of your airbrush for many years to come. We thank you for watching this video.